Now, in a relentless assault, Israel has launched one of its most intense bombardment on Beirut's southern suburbs, shaking the Lebanese capital. With the tensions escalating on the border, the scale of the destruction is vast and the toll on civilians is mounting. Here's a report. Booms echoed through Beirut. Massive strikes lit up the skies with fireballs. Explosions were seen on the horizon and the ground trembled. As dawn broke, the extent of the devastation was revealed. Smoke rose over South Beirut where Israel unleashed over 30 airstrikes targeting Hezbollah in its Dahir stronghold. The densely populated suburb lies in ruins. Residents who were caught in this deadly crossfire cried out in desperation. We have been displaced for 10 days now. We don't have any food with us. You're not able to even go and bring new clothes. We left our homes and came here. Every night there is a strike. You cannot sleep. We came here and we were unable to go back from where we came. Our situation is terrible. What we are seeing until now, the amount of destruction we see, shows that there might be no safe spaces, even here, in the street, by the Cornish. It might not be safe as well in the coming days. We say thank God. In Harit Shreek, all the buildings are gone and destroyed. We no longer have homes. Israeli forces claimed they targeted strikes on Hezbollah's weapons storage facilities. But the intensity of the assault has led to civilian casualties and widespread displacement. Lebanese government is urgently calling for international intervention, pleading for a ceasefire to prevent further bloodshed. They don't have red lines. They never had red lines. They didn't have red lines in Gaza and they won't have red lines in, in Lebanon. But in Lebanon, military speaking, it will be harder on them to enter. And they are paying also a big price. Hezbollah, in its response, claimed a successful strike on Israeli soldiers in northern Israel with a large rocket salvo, though these claims remain unconfirmed. Israel's relentless bombing of Hezbollah strongholds has reportedly killed Hassan Nasrallah, Hezbollah's leader and possibly his successor. The death toll in Lebanon is climbing, with at least 2,000 killed, including civilians, medics and fighters. This has also led to 1.2 million Lebanese being driven from their homes. Israel states its objective is to neutralize Hezbollah and secure its northern border. Bureau report, we on. Wild is one. Let's now talk about the situation in West Asia. Zahra Aldazi is a journalist and she's now joining us from Beirut. Zahra, thank you very much for making time for us and welcome to the broadcast. What is the situation on the ground in Beirut right now? Actually, uh, Beirut uh, has lived in a very intensive uh, airstrikes during uh, the night, despite the Israeli military uh, spokesperson in Arabic is uh, released uh, every night warnings about the uh, targets they claim they will they will uh, target, but apparently and very clearly the the they target more than what they say uh, they will. And uh, there is uh, still uh, civilians are uh, being killed in the Israeli uh, air threat despite uh, the, uh, the wave of uh, displacement. There is much destruction in uh, the southern th suburb of Beirut, which is known as Zahi, and uh, as uh, Israel military claims 
to target uh, Hezbollah warehouses, uh, ammunition warehouses or, or centers, but the destructions and the targets that Israel is uh, targeting and which is known for the locals in the southern suburb of Beirut really is that the, uh, they, the aim is not only to target Hezbollah, but also to destroy uh, these residential areas to prevent the residents from returning to the southern suburb of Beirut and uh, causing a displacement and uh, a more uh, increasing humanitarian need in Lebanon. Zahra, talking about uh, destruction, some hospitals have stopped functioning. Can you confirm that for us? And what is being done to treat the number of those injured, especially in the most affected parts of Beirut? Yes, uh, the, the Minister of uh, Health, uh, Firas Abdel, said that uh, three hospitals in the southern suburb of Beirut went out of service. Uh, that uh, they are uh, Burj Al Barazni Hospital, Rasul Azam Hospital, uh, and the Saint Therese um, Medical uh, Centers, who are located which are located in uh, the so southern suburb of Beirut. Some were uh, targeted uh, directly, some uh, were uh, very damaged due to, to the Israeli attacks because we, we saw that uh, the explosions uh, that rocked the sky in, uh, in the, the southern suburb of Beirut uh, last night and uh, these explosions, some experts, uh, they say that Israel is using the internationally uh, banned weapons, so the damages uh, are not about only the targets, but also uh, a very vast uh, circle of damages due to the uh, weapons that Israel uh, is, need, uh, is using. And also uh, there are some uh, other uh, attacks on hospitals in southern uh, Lebanon, and we witnessed that uh, the Salah Gandul Hospital was targeted, and Israel prevented the paramedics uh, to evacuate the casualties from Salah Gandur, as Israel also is claiming that the ambulances that belong to Al Hay Al Sahiya, the uh, which serve not only Hezbollah, but also serve as the civilians across the country are being used for military uh, reasons by the Lebanese group. Zara. Zara, what's the latest on the intense fighting on the border between Hezbollah and Israeli troops? Very quickly. Yes, Hezbollah released uh, today uh, seven statements, releasing uh, seven attacks, and it uh, seems that Hezbollah is still being able to prevent any infiltration by uh, the Israeli troops uh, through the southern uh, Lebanon uh, border. And uh, despite uh, the Israeli uh, attacks on uh, the uh, Hezbollah positions in uh, southern uh, Lebanon, but still, Hezbollah is still being able to attack the Israeli military sites and also to attack the, uh, the uh, ad, uh, advancing troops along the Lebanon-Israel border. Mm -hmm. Zara, again, very quickly, we do understand that the Lebanese Prime Minister did call for a de-escalation of these tensions. Has there been any other voice apart from the Prime Minister who is calling for a ceasefire? Actually, the, the uh, position of uh, the, uh, the whole uh, Lebanese government is uh, calling for a ceasefire and also for a full implementation uh, of uh, the uh, UN resolution in 1701. But uh, to, uh, speaking on the facts and on the ground, the, this is not can be reached right now without international community efforts to pressure uh, Israel. And there is no real intention for the international community as long as the, there is uh, an opportunity for the U.S. and Israel to eliminate uh, Hezbollah and weaken Iran and uh, its allies uh, in uh, uh, the reasons, but the, uh, the Lebanese government is calling with uh, prime minister, by ministers, by the uh, parliament speaker that uh, there, there is a need for a ceasefire in uh, Lebanon and implementation of the UN resolutions, including the 1701 or 15 or so 59. All right, Zahra.
Aldazi is a journalist. She has been talking to us live from Beirut. Zahra, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time and for talking to us today.